Hey y'all, Gregor here with a brand new video. This time I wanted to go over something that I get asked quite often from new and even sometimes like more seasoned players. And it is, how do I start making decks in Marvel Snap? And how do I know if my decks in Marvel Snap are any good? So this is my how to make good snap decks in five simple steps. But before we get into the video, if you're able to like, comment, subscribe, do all of those things, we're very close to hitting our next milestone, the 3,000 watch hours to where we can start doing like supers and paid subscriptions as well as opening like a merch site. So things like that. And then another thousand hours and we'll be able to apply for a partner and ad revenue. So if you're able to watch till the end, it is genuinely appreciated. And the more you can engage with the video, the more it gets pushed out to more people. Thank you all for watching. Let's get into it. How to make good snap decks in five simple steps. So first off, let's get into what makes a Marvel snap deck. So Marvel snap, unlike other TCGs or CCGs only has 12 cards within a deck. Unlike Magic the Gathering, where you could have anywhere from 40 to 60, up to 100 cards, depending on the format, Marvel Snap is a lot simpler and a lot more accessible for a lot of players. So no matter what, you're gonna have 12 cards in your deck. You can get more cards added through specific cards, but let's just say that we're sticking with 12 cards. Now, the first and easiest way to get started building decks is just using the auto build deck feature. So let's just auto fill a deck and it builds us something. Okay, so it builds us a discard deck. Pretty solid discard deck. So it'll try to generate a deck for you based off of the cards that are available and using meta relevant information. It will try to build you something that will work and it is a great place to start. There's nothing wrong with using the auto draft feature. Sometimes it makes some questionable decisions for what it includes in there. This is a absolutely great starting point where if you don't really understand how to build a deck and you're overwhelmed by the thought of building a deck, this is a great place to start. What's really cool about it, so let's delete this one, is you can do something as simple as adding one or two cards so you know what you want within the deck. So let's say I want Deadpool and I want Nova, and then I have it auto generate a deck for me. It's going to build me a destroy style deck because it understands those cards are destroy cards. So look at that. It just built me. This is a probably a pretty decent destroy list. It's got null. It's got death. It's got all the stuff. So again, you can kind of use this as a way to get a better understanding of how you want to build your deck. Let's say you're not interested in doing the auto generate deck. Let's say you want to build your own from scratch, which a lot of people do. First off, you need to understand something that is pretty important here, and that is understanding card synergies. When I say card synergies, I'm saying cards that work very well together, that are meant to be played together because it's peanut butter and jelly is how I would describe it. So for example, this is, I can consistently say, if I see a Korg in a deck and I see a, and I see a Rock Slide in a deck, I know for a fact that that deck will also run Darkhawk because they synergize so well together. Darkhawk, they will have consistently Darkhawk. So there are other cards that will synergize really well together. So first question you should ask yourself is, what kind of deck am I building and what cards can I add so they will synergize well together? Am I building a destroy deck? Am I building a discard deck? Am I building an ongoing deck? Am I building an on reveal deck? There are so many different deck types that you can build that just work together. A lot of people will ask me my favorite card in the game or what's the strongest card in the game. Favorite card is Jeff. But what is the strongest card in the game? There's not really an answer to that because most of the cards are strong at an individual level, but they are much stronger when we get into their synergies and things that make them better. So the cards work better together. You find pieces that work well together. So you could be an affliction type deck, decks that deal negative power. You could do like a mid range deck where they are constantly buffing each other with like Thena and Angela. So understanding synergies is a great place to start. Usually when we're talking synergies, when we're talking deck lists, they are built in what we call shells. So you take a little bit of a shell of a deck type here, a little bit of a shell of a deck type there, and you put those shells together to build new lists. So we'll usually see things like there, let's say I take the Darkhawk shell, for example. I take the Darkhawk shell, I put in my guys Korg, I put in my guys Rock Slide, and I put in my other guy Darkhawk. This is an example of a shell. So we have one shell here, but let's say we're also doing a negative, or not a negative, we're doing also doing a junk shell. So with a junk shell, we would want things like Sentry, we would also want a Nihilus, and then we would want Hood. This is another example of a shell. So we have the combo here. 
So Sentry sends over the Void, the Hood is negative, you use Annihilus to flip them all over to your side. We've just used two different synergies, put them together, and we have a new deck type using two different shells. So you could take little bits and pieces, put them together, and that is how you will start building your deck. Now, the next thing we're gonna talk about is understanding your tech options. When I say a tech card, a tech card is a card that doesn't necessarily fit within your deck, but it counters something that your opponent may play. So let's say your deck is getting countered by, by like an on reveal card or specific on reveal cards that are making your life difficult. The best known ones are examples of armor, Cosmo, Shang-Chi. So if on reveal is a problem, I would add a card like Cosmo, the best doggo in the game, right? So let's add this. Another example would be Killmonger. So if there are a lot of one cost cards in the meta right now, you might want to add Killmonger to your deck. Killmonger would be an option to get rid of your opponent's one cost card. So if you're running into like a lot of zoo deck or you're playing a destroy list, Killmonger may be a good card for you. And then let's get into probably the most well-known tech option in the game, Shang-Chi, a very needed element. He's annoying, I know, but without Shang-Chi, we would be every card. It, we, it's just a battle of who has the biggest cards at that point. So Shang-Chi is a release valve for the meta. Shang-Chi destroys any card that has 10 or more power. And then the other one I will add is the ongoing counter that is Enchantress. So depending on the meta, these two cards will usually flip. If there is a lot of really big, strong cards that are 10 power or more, we will see Shang-Chi. If we are seeing a lot of cards that are like uh, ongoing, we will see Enchantress. Now, of course, there are a lot more tech options in the game. I've only just hit like the tip of the iceberg. I want you all to, in the comments, reply with some of your favorite, favorite tech options in the game. Most of the tech options that are available become available within series three or series pool three, as they call it. That is collection level of 486 and higher. So that's when you start getting into a lot of these other tech options so you can counter specific decks. The next tip that I have for you is understanding your energy or your mana curve. So let's take a look at the deck that we have right now. So right now, when I say energy or mana curve, I am looking at the cost of these cards. So Hood is one cost, Korg is one cost, Cosmo is three cost, Killmonger is three cost, Rock Slide is three cost. We have one, two, three, four, four cost cards, and we have two five cost cards. It's not too bad at this point i would say really if you want to have a perfectly balanced curve you would have two cards of every cost that is a perfectly balanced curve so that is a good starting point it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced but understanding what a balanced curve looks like is very important so you're going to want to be able to play a card every turn if you can having the ideal curve would be being able to spend every bit of your energy every turn without floating or waste any energy so let's try and build a better balanced card so i'm getting rid of killmonger because we don't really need the killmonger i'm going to get rid of the Enchantress, I think the Shang-Chi is pretty solid. We now have two one cost, two three cost, two four cost, and two five cost cards. Let's So what we need is two two cost cards and then two six cost cards. So let's look at some good two cost card options. So in terms of flexibility, the three most flexible two cost cards in the deck, in my personal opinion, are White Widow, Jeff, and then also the third one being Kate Bishop's Hawkeye. So for this list, I'm thinking this is a junk list. I really like the options that we have available with Hawkeye. We need two though. We need two. Let's do both. Why am I all worried about it? We could do both right now. So we do White Widow and Hawkeye here. And then we need six cost cards with what we have, with things that would make sense in our list. Six cost cards are like your big bads. I just like the options that they give us. So they just let you put out a lot of power. We got cards that don't start in our deck, but I don't think, do we get enough options with that? Mockingbird could be a good choice. Let's go Mockingbird. And then like we're just putting big bodies down. I think Elioth would make sense. So I chose Mockingbird Elioth, but Ultron could also makes sense. We could also do Odin, but I think this is pretty solid. I'm thinking of the cards that give these other cards value. So this is a perfectly balanced curve. We have two one cost cards, two two cost cards, two three cost cards, two four cost cards, two five cost cards, and two six cost cards. I would start this. This is a great starting point for building a deck, but from this, you can make changes. So we know that Mockingbird will usually get for less than six because she gets cost reduction for every card that did not start in our deck. So you could have a deck with a lot more three cost cards. Just know that you are affecting that curve and you want to be thinking about your energy curve whenever you are making a deck next up and this is the the fifth piece of building a good nap deck is understanding priority or tempo as it is called so understanding priority is important priority is determined by which locations which player has the most power across all locations some decks you want to keep priority 
this deck you could you're either going to take prio or you're going to throw prio an example of that being a situation where we want to lose priority would be shang chi if they have a big card we want to throw priority so that we can do shang chi last turn take out those cards that are plus 10 power and also an example in this deck of a situation where we would want to lose or we would want to take priority i should say would be Eliath. so we want to get ahead of them before the last turn and then Eliath and stop whatever they're going to do on their last turn if you don't know what Eliath does on reveal move, remove the text from all unrevealed enemy cards here so that would be really really good for us the way that we could do that is we could put out the hood we could put out White Widow, Hawkeye, all of that. Sentry on four. We could do Annihilus on five and then use Eliath to block their play. Alternatively, we could go the route of not even playing Hood or Sentry. We could go Korg into Rock Slide on three. We could do White Widow or Hawkeye on two. And then we could do we could do a combo of like maybe White Widow, Hood, or Hawkeye. Hawkeye gives us multiple options we could do. So we could do something on four. And then on five, we drop Dark Hawk. And then on last turn, we either go with Mockingbird or Eliath. That's a good example that this deck could take both want to take or lose priority. Determine whether your deck wants to take priority early by having more power. Good cards for getting priority early on. The best example example is Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl goes what we like to say wide because she puts two other cards in, in locations. So you are guaranteed to have more power across all three locations than your opponent will unless they play Squirrel Girl. So that's just a good example of a card that takes prio early. And really why I like Zoo decks is Zoo is great for tempo in some cases. Specifically, New Zoo is really, really strong. And then the last piece of advice I want to give y'all is knowing what resources you have available. So when I'm playing the game, I have a little overview here so you see how you can see what my deck is running below here that is from untapped.gg untapped gg is a wonderful resource you can download the application on your pc and it will show you like if you're looking at what i can see right now within gaming you see the find more decks and view my stats up here that's all from untapped.gg so if i go to find more decks it pulls open a page and it knows what decks i have available based off of my sign in so it has a category of all the snap decks that i have available i can also go into my stats and it will tell you how good my decks are so this is the deck that i've been running for infinite right now barzy token idiots 67 to 40 plus 92 net cubes ridiculous and understanding like you could think a deck is good but without actually knowing your numbers and your wins and losses you don't really have a good understanding so this is a fantastic tool even if you're a newer player because it will give you options for building decks i love untap.gg now another really great resource that you have is marvel snap zone so marvel snap zone has tips tricks guides meta tier lists cards you can get all of the information here i use a combination of three different sites i use untap.gg i use marvel snap zone and i use snap.fan i personally like marvel snap zone for the cards that they have i use a lot of the cards art that they have on here I will download and use on thumbnails and things like that. Snap fan. I like Snap fan for their deck builder. That's my just my personal my personal preference. So this is where I keep all of my this is where I keep all of my decks. I can go in here, I go to my decks. I can see every list that I've ever played and I can also see the stats on those lists. So make sure you are utilizing the resources that are available to you. These will help you out immensely in terms of building, in terms of staying updated on the current meta and what people are playing. I really hope that this video was helpful to you. If it was, please let me know in the comments. Let me know what I could have done better if you have any constructive criticism. It is very appreciated, but thank you all for watching. I love doing these tips and tricks videos because from what I've heard, they give you a lot of value and y'all learn stuff. Like I've gotten very positive feedback from y'all. So I wanna keep doing these. I already have an idea for the next one. I think this is gonna be the last video that we'll have this week, but we should have another snap deck guide on Tuesday like we always do. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to eat food, drink water, take your meds, get enough sleep, and remember that the world is better with you in it. I'll catch you all next time. Thank you for watching.